Greetings gentlemen, ladies, old school game snob here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at uh, basically creating a more uh, realistic ragdoll. Uh, if you have a ragdoll and it's fallen down like a folded piece of paper, uh, this might be the video for you. Let me show you how it kind of looks to start. Alright, so if you're new to this, you're going to want to start by opening up your model's physics asset. Most models have these included. If not, I think you can just generate a create a physics asset. Yeah, and then you can go ahead and, and edit that physics asset uh, uh, from your skeletal mesh. Um, I already have a physics asset set up here, and as you can see, this uh, has a bunch of a bunch of little boundary capsules. These are basically the physics hit detection areas. All right, so if I were to simulate physics on this one right now, uh, you'll notice it kind of folds like a piece of paper, and that is because some of the constraints aren't really set up. So here's how to uh, simulate. You can also hit Alt Enter on your keyboard, but you can see that it looks kind of, it doesn't look too good. You can also slow down uh, how quickly everything falls, and you can kind of see that, uh, oh, there's just too, it's too much, it's too much Gumby. You remember Gumby and Pokey from like the 80s, that cartoon? It's too much Gumby. All right, so we want to make this a little bit more constrained. A little bit more restricted. Um, so let's jump over to my other character that I'm currently working on. Uh, and also let me show you guys something really quick here. Uh, f if first, and first regarding the uh, size of the physics assets that you're working on, uh, basically your little physics capsules, right? So you can basically just click on any of them and adjust them around and kind of make them fit, right? But notice if you have a physics uh, uh, capsule that's too small. All right, let me jump into my game really quick and show you what happens if, you're, if, you're, if your capsule is too small. All right, so you'll, well, maybe I should have made it a bit smaller there because it's kind of hard to see. Um, what, what you'll notice, actually, you can see on the legs there, right? You can see on the legs that they're actually clipping through the ground. And the way that uh, it seems to be able to, seems to fix this is just to make your your physics bubble bigger, right? So if I were to do something like that uh, and go ahead and shoot my character, you can see his act head's actually like floating off the ground a little bit now. It's kind of hard to see, but maybe I should make it even bigger. Make it even bigger and make this kind of even more exaggerated. Let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, so, I mean, I think you can see that, right? It's kind of floating off the ground a bit, right? And that's basically because this little bubble here is your hit, your, your basically your, your collision detection. So that's what you're going to be doing with these bubbles. You're going to be basically de de telling the, uh, the physics kind of ragdoll or whatever of where, where to draw the line, where to keep things out, where to block stuff. By the way, all I'm doing here to uh, enable Ragdoll, by the way, is I'm setting uh, setting to simulate physics uh, on my on my mesh. All right. So in this case, it's called Hero Mesh. That's just my skeletal mesh, not my capsule component, but the actual skeletal mesh inside of my character. And then what I've also done is I've set the collision uh, profile on my uh, collision preset, rather collision preset on my skeletal mesh to a rag doll. All right, so when you do that, now basically what's happening here is when the player receives, you know, zero health, then I've just set simulate physics on for the for the skeletal component, the actual capsule component. You'll probably notice doesn't even do it, doesn't move, it just stays where it is, but the skeletal component inside is set to rag doll. Right? But we want to make that fall look more realistic. We also don't want it to clip through the ground, and we also want uh, we also want to uh, not and not not look like like folded paper, right? When he's falling down, we don't want to look like folded paper. All right. So I'm going to jump back over to my character that I'm working on here. Basically, what you will see inside of your capsules is uh, these little uh, these little um, these little restraints here. How did those get there in the first place? I don't know. Mine came rigged with them. Um, how do you add them? I'm not sure. I think you add, add, uh, I think, uh, let's see, uh, is, there, is there a way to add a restraint? Probably, I mean, I'm sure there is, but constraints, here we go. Add constraint to, anyway, I think that's, if, if you don't happen to have constraints on your, on your uh, physics asset yet, 
I dare say that's where you would go and do that. I'm not entirely sure how to do that, but this tutorial assumes that you've already kind of imported a character and you already have some physics restraints set up. Mine's from Character Creator 3, um, but I'm thinking most physics assets probably have a basic constraint system set up. So this uh, tutorial will focus just on how to constrain those physics assets. But basically, here's the uh, constraint for the knees. Here's the ones for the hips. Uh, here's the one. For you Basically, these, these two little... Uh, uh, kind of triangle-y looking things, a red one and a green one. Wherever you see these little triangle-y looking things, you can click those and you can actually um, grab the restraint that you're looking for. So what we're going to be looking for uh, on the right is uh, under, uh, under angular limits, what we're going to be doing here is adjusting the angular limits. So uh, what you will see over here is uh, the swing limit one, swing limit two, and twist. So twist is, of course, uh, if the joint twists, right? Like if you, you know, can twist your knee, uh, like on the yaw, uh, that is not something a knee can do, right? So a knee shouldn't be able to twist around. So basically, I've set that down to five, so that can't twist. Uh, and this is if the knee can uh, fold forward and back, or no. This one's if the knee can fold left and right, right, left to right. And this one if, is how far the knee can fold forward and backwards. Right, and you can kind of see the little graphical indicator showing which direction uh, the swing limit or twist limit is uh, is corresponding to. Right. So if, for example, I was to set this to, let's just set it to zero. Right. I, actually, let me show you first how it looks in at the moment. Right. So you can have a reference there. And as you can see, that bends and uh, stops bending at 125 degrees, I think. No, 135 degrees. So it stops bending at 135 degrees. If I were to take that and set that to zero, that joint there is not going to bend at all, right? So as you can see, the left one still bends because I didn't do the left one, but oh, sorry, the right one, but the left one doesn't bend at all, right? And that's basically it in a nutshell. That's how you adjust your uh, restraints around so you can kind of create a more realistic looking uh, a more realistic looking fall, right? So like I say, forward, backward, left, right, and twisty twist. Those are what you need to adjust. And that's kind of all there is to it. And otherwise, like I say, uh, in order to prevent your model from clipping through the ground, you're gonna wanna make sure to go through, and this is what I'm doing now, is fattening up my, uh, fattening up my capsules. And you can just adjust these, you know, as you would any other thing. You can move them around, you can scale them, you can do whatever. Um, yeah, just kind of as normal. You can also switch the type of component, I believe, by right-clicking here, and um, I believe you can switch the shape out. No, there I added a box. Anyway, I'm, it's kind of, it kind of seems to me like, you know, just kind of place it as works. Uh, I'm not sure if they need to be attached to something specifically or not. They don't seem to be attached. Maybe they are, but I'm not sure how that reference is created. But Anyway, like I say, I'm still learning stuff, and the point of this video is basically just to show you guys how to create uh, a skeletal system that doesn't fall like paper, falls like more of a, uh, a rigid, 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 uh, rigid system. So you just go ahead and go through and uh, adjust all of the different constraints to your liking, your basically your head, your neck, your shoulders, your uh, arms, your torso, etc. like that. So I'll show you guys one more time really quick. I think you probably get the idea. But let's see here. Make sure you click the right thing, the right little component. Um, bum, 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 bum. So this one here, like I say, right now, what is that? That's the left and the right, forward and the back? Eh, I'm not sure. I'm going to change that to something big, right, like 120 degrees. And let's see what happens when we simulate that. I should bend way over. Yeah, as you can see, <laughs> I bent way, way over. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's that's too much. So I'm gonna just put that back to kind of my settings. I've been just kind of you just kind of monkey around with it until you find it. As you, with anything in Unreal Engine, you monkey around until you figure it out. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope that's helpful, and I'll see you later.